Hello and welcome to Art in Our Front Yard. Today we're talking about art at the Jetport and several of the artists who've made artwork here will be talking about their work and their process. Today we're going to hear from Jay Sawyer, who is the artist who made one of the pieces at the Portland International Jetport, a spirit of its own. This is a piece that draws very strongly from the history of aviation in the state of Maine, and it's also a lovely steel sculpture. Jay will talk to you about the history of it and what brought him to making pieces out of steel shear rings. talk about a square of its own, which is a sculpture installed at the Portland International Jet Port. It was installed in April of 2014. Uh, it was uh, very organic how it all came about. And my name is Jay Sawyer. Uh, the material that the sculpture was created with, the shear rings. Uh, they have a history and a, and a chain of custody that's pretty interesting. This here is a steel shear ring. This would have been from the mid 20th century. It is a band created with uh, 3 16 by one inch flat bar with a little tongue and groove uh, alignment here on the end. And it's rolled into a four and a half inch outside diameter circle and these would have been used by the thousands in these wooden trusses at the Brunswick Naval Air Station. So they were used in the construction of wooden trusses for hangar number two at the Brunswick Naval Air Station. And this would have been built in World War II uh, and they, made, they used a lot of wood to conserve on steel in that era. And these were kits that were made by, I believe it was Warehouser Company on the West Coast had government contracts and they put these hangers up all over the nation. So uh, two of them were at uh, Brunswick and in the year 2000 hangar number two was demolished. And then a company in Portland, Maine, they were actually working on Thompson Point, uh, it was called Barnstormers, and they retrieved, they salvaged a bunch of these wooden trusses to repurpose the wood. So as they were breaking down the trusses and all the different courses of lumber, they actually saved each of these individual rings and the bolts and washers and everything and used the wood. So then in the year 2004, a very good friend of mine named David McLaughlin noticed these shear rings at Thompson Point and he was doing some work with the owner and he worked, he traded some of his services to acquire these shear rings. They were really maybe his most cherished possession for a raw material. In that time, I was actually in transition from my, my engineering and welding career and chasing this passion to be a sculptor and had met David and we became very close friends. So our friendship had grown and all and then sadly enough in the year 2010, uh, David took his own life. So that very morning, he had penned a letter and he wanted me to have this remaining collection of shear rings to carry on the subject of spheres. And he had made spheres up to a certain diameter and I was making spheres of different materials. So I, I finally got that collection of shear rings to my studio and began making my very first sphere out of that and there was maybe 6,000 shear rings total. And so I wanted that first sphere to be significant somehow. And as it turned out, luck would have it that I had a collection of um, some of David's work and in it were these small spheres that he had made with the shear rings. So my very first one was 32 inches and I took one of his that was around 19 inches. And as I was creating mine, I set his inside it and then completed mine and titled the piece Late Collaboration. Uh, in honor of him and his influence and all. And that's on display at my gallery at home in Warren. And that inspired, obviously, to go bigger. And this was something we had both talked of, was a sphere inside a sphere. But uh, I had never done one and he had never done one. So this was a great achievement here in itself for me. 
and uh, it was a great way to pay tribute to David. So the next one, the bigger one, was even more powerful, and that was a 55-inch diameter on the outside with a 32 hanging in the center of it. And I attached an image of that sculpture in progress, really, because it had no base uh, to my email campaign and got some response from a patron, and they wanted all the information about it. So I wrote quite a letter with the history and all about it, and they really felt that the story had so much Maine history that it should stay in Maine and be prominently displayed for the people of Maine to, and its visitors to have exposure to. So they tipped me off to the 1916 Foundation, and the 1916 Foundation felt that it was a worthy project. So I set out on a mission to find a, a body which would be the Davistown Museum, in Liberty. They celebrate the marriage of tools and art, and they have a museum already, and David was a past board member, and I was a board member, so it seemed pretty fitting to have the museum purchase the rights to exhibit the sculpture, and then find a real prominent place in the state of Maine to display it. So I had heard of the recent sculptures installed at the Jetport, so I, I, call, I contacted the Jetport, and it was also pertinent there, I think, very much, and the reception of it was strong because of the aviation history that was already there and, and well represented by coming from the hangar. And also, Paul Bradbury felt that the, uh, the, the spherical shape represented the globe well, which was strong in the aviation industry and actually used in a lot of logos and all. So. We worked and worked for a couple of years' time and went through the process, and the foundation cut a check to the museum, and the museum purchased the rights to exhibit it, and the, see the jet port agreed to display it, and then we went before the Portland Public Art Committee, and they approved the sculpture, and then we worked through the location. We changed the elevation of the sculpture to fit that location. So it's a, a little bit site-specific for being right there on Jetport Boulevard and uh, real close to the runway. You can see it, you know, if you're on the access road in a vehicle or you can see it if you're taxiing uh, on the tarmac. So uh, it has generated some response from around the country. People asking a lot of questions all the time, what are the rings and all. So <clears throat> this is really a great opportunity here that the Portland Public Act committee has provided to, for me to tell this story and this story to be accessible for, for those who see the sculpture and want to know that. Okay, so back to the sculpture, the a spirit of its own, uh, the outside di the diameter of the outside sphere is 55 inches and inside that on a stainless steel cable hangs a 32 inch diameter sphere. The bottom, it has been uh, modified a little bit so that six of those particular shear rings line up with the legs that come up to support it. The, the legs were cut from a uh, steel flat bar. Uh, they were tapered like from four inches at the bottom to two inches at the top and then rolled to the form to, to get that little kind of force perspective going up and trying to, to blend in there and, and meet the bottom of the sphere and blend right in for a nice transition. So it's all steel, it'll weather naturally. The jet port has agreed to apply a penetrol annually if needed. I don't suspect that we're gonna need that. I expect we're gonna lighten that up. And it, will, it still is uh, gaining its patina on the base uh, when that was made, that still had a mill scale on it. The top is well patinaed. The inside sphere already has a coat of oil on it, but it looks like it's going to weather very well. So it really should be uh, real easy to maintain. It's, it's going to be there forever. It's an indefinite loan from the museum to the jet port, and, uh, and if, if it could potentially get moved to another location on the jet port, but uh, it was just that annual or less than annual application of the, uh, the oil, it, it will hold up fine to the outdoors here in Maine. It's gonna be there forever, so the, the oil will do it. <laughs>